22 hacks that every programmer should know. If you want to reach your potential, if you want to save the world, you need to learn this. Is it possible to learn this power? We'll start with small everyday hacks and then we'll climb our way up to the most original hardcore hacks you have ever seen. Number one, let's say you want to write some logs and print a variable in the console. The boring way to do it is to type something like console log, number of apples, num apples. But who in the world has time for that? What real pros do is control option L. Damn. For that, you need to install the VS Code extension Turbo Console Log. You can even log multiple variables at the same time. Check this out. Any fruit you want, you can log it. There are a bunch of additional settings. You can choose to add delimiters, the file name, the line number, emojis. You can go crazy with it. Next, there is a simple hack you can do in VS Code where you don't even need to install an extension. Look at how smooth I'm typing. You can set your cursor in the settings to phase mode and turn on the smooth carrot animation. Your cursor will go from this to this. Smooth. Now let's say you did some changes in your code and you want to push that to your repo. So you do git add and then git commit dash m. But do you know that you can also do it in only one command? Git commit dash am. You just saved three seconds. Not bad, huh? You're not impressed? What about this? You see my terminal? This is what the default bash terminal looks like. It's so ugly that it's hard to look at it. You can easily customize it by installing oh my zsh. Now you have the name of your folder, the branch you're on, and you can see if you have changes that need to be committed or not. And if that's not enough, there's another Git extension that you can add, this time in VS Code, and it's called Git Lens. You bring Git right into your editor. You can view the commit history, navigate the previous versions of the file. But the trick I like the most of this extension is that now on every line of code, you see the author, the date, and the message of the most recent commit for this file. Now let's see some hacks to use when you're actually coding. One of my favorite shortcuts to use is Command D. This allows you to select the next occurrence of your selection in this file. You can select them one by one and easily navigate through your code like that. Let's rename this variable. Once you're on the line of code, if you want to get your cursor to the start of the line, you do Fn left arrow. But if you want to get it at the end of the line, you do Fn right arrow. I find this hack particularly useful in the terminal since you don't have your mouse there to move the cursor. Imagine you made a typo in the first character and then you have to keep pressing the left arrow until you get there. It's a very humiliating situation for a programmer to be in, especially if someone is watching. With this hack, no more of this. Now let's say you want to select a piece of code. The amateur way of doing it is to use your mouse. The pro hacker way is to use only your keyboard. You never use your mouse really. Control shift arrow allows you to select word by word and command shift arrow allows you to select the content of the entire line. If you want to go even faster than that, let's say you want to copy this line, there isn't even a need to select it. Don't waste your time selecting. Save an extra second by just pressing command C to copy the line. Then look at this. I'm just pressing command V nonstop and it keeps pasting it. The same works if you want to cut it. Command X and then command V to paste it. But if I'm trying to paste code from one file to another, it's annoying to have to jump back and forth between the two. I, I don't like that. So I'll split the view with command backslash. That way I can see multiple files in the same screen. It's kind of like having two monitors. All right, what happens if I want to comment this block of code? I don't need it anymore. Beam. What you saw just now, you might believe this is magic. But trust me when I say this, there is no magic here. This is not a magic tricks channel. This is a channel for people who want to save the world, people who want to awake their potential and go from zero to one. And this is another trick in our toolbox. Press command slash to comment any line or block of code. And if you press it again, it uncomments it. <laughs> and wait, it gets crazier than this. There is one weird hack that I discovered completely by accident. Check this out. What if I want to add a character at the start of every line? Do I have to do it one by one for every variable? Of course. Not. Shift option allows you to drag your cursor over each line and then you just type whatever you want. But if I want to put this block of code inside of an if statement, I'm in troubles. You see the problem? The code is not indented and I don't want to have to do it manually for each line. Here this is literally the easiest shortcut ever. You just press tab. Whoops, I did it too many times. No worries though, we can easily reverse that with tab shift to decrease the indent. However, there are a few lines of code I copied that are not supposed to be here. Of course, I could just cut them out of there and then paste them outside of the if statement. But who am I trying to fool? You guys know it by now. There's something much cooler coming. With option and up or down arrow, you can move the code up or down. And honestly, it has the extra benefit of just being fun to do. Now I'm done playing with this file and I want to work on another file. 
pineapples.js. But I don't know where it is. If I go to the files explorer, there are too many fruits. I mean files. So I just use another power we have. Command P to locate any file in an instant. Got it. But if you tell me, uh, Zorbek, I don't know how my file is called. I just know the name of the function I need in this file. I say to you, brother, relax. Do not fear. Because a simple solution we have. Command Shift F opens the global search which finds your keyword inside of any file in your project. But VS Code is not the only place where you'll spend time as a developer. Like any human, sometimes you'll just be browsing the web. So I'm about to show you a few hacks that will level up how you use the internet. Let's say you just stumbled on a website you like and you think, hey, I'm wondering which technologies it's built on. Well, with the Chrome extension Wapalizer, you don't have to guess anymore. On any website, you click on the extension icon and it tells you the list of technologies used to build it. But this extension really is nothing compared to this next one. If you're one of those people who have a habit of opening a thousand tabs at a time, which let's be honest, I know you are, then just like me, you're gonna love one tab. This fancy little tool allows you to group all your tabs into one with a simple press of a button. You can then access all of them through this web page. You can open them back one by one, open all of them at once, and you can even share your group of tabs with your friends. Can you imagine that? Oh, I just opened YouTube. Bad reflex. YouTube is both a blessing and a problem because it's a time prison. There are too many distractions and when you're busy working on the next billion dollar startup, you can't allow yourself to be distracted like that. That's why my YouTube looks nothing like this. This is what my YouTube looks like. That's right, fully empty. I call it my minimalistic YouTube. Using the extension Unhook, the only videos I can see are the ones I specifically search for. Nothing is randomly suggested to me anymore. Even when I open a video, I don't see any suggestions. This means that my YouTube breaks are now under more control and I can quickly get back to work. Right now I'm on GitHub about to submit a pull request for a new feature I built. If you ever had to review someone's code, you know that in general, it's not really a fun process. But a simple hack you can use that a few people know is that you can set up a template for your pull requests. If you create a pull request markdown file inside of a GitHub folder in your repo, GitHub will automatically use that template to pre-populate the description. I've chosen to do mine with a lot of emojis just because it makes it more fun, honestly. But if you wanna bring this to the next level to really impress your team, first you have to write good code, but then you can add a GIF to demo that new feature you built. To create my GIFs, I use Cloud App. It's super easy to use. You select the region, click on the start button, and then once your GIF is recorded, you can even add annotations, arrows, or text. You can also take regular screenshots or record videos. Now everyone will be impressed by your next pull requests. But creating those templates is not the only cool hack you can do with GitHub. My favorite hack actually is GitHub Pages. Do you know that you can host your website for free straight from GitHub? Go to any repository you have, navigate to the settings, then Pages, pick the source, and then save. That's it. If you have an index.html file in your repo, your website will now be accessible. You can share it with anyone and build your portfolio like that. That was it for me. Let me know which hack was your favorite. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm trying to reach 2,000 subscribers. Alright my hackers, see you next time.